Welcome to this week's tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to use your gel press printing plate, some uh, five one foot lengths of jute string, a brayer, and some selected colors along with uh, brown craft blank uh, note cards and envelopes to make a stack of greeting cards beautiful hand-painted greeting cards that are going to be much more impressive and much more likely to be kept and held onto uh, than something that you just purchase at the store. And since they're blank, you can use them for all occasions. So, all right, let's get started. So what I'm first going to do is to apply a small amount of the lightest color that I have to work with onto the gel plate. And I think my lightest color of the four that I've selected is probably either the teal or the gold. Uh, the next color would be the quinacridone magenta and the last color in terms of light to dark would be the uh, anthraquinone blue. So I'm going to start with the teal. I'm not going to cover the whole plate. I'm just going to make myself a strip so that I can do one small area on the card. So I'm going to roll this out thin with my brayer. And I don't want the brayer to be sliding around on the plate, but I want the paint to be uh, a nice thin layer. I don't want the brayer to roll and remove paint as it rolls along. So as long as it's not slipping and sliding or pulling the paint off, you've got the right amount. And you may need to play with that. I'm then going to arrange my string in just a random pattern on that strip. And I'm going to take the card and I'm going to lay it down wide open on the full length of this, which is gonna make a stripe. And I'm gonna put it towards, position it towards the top and press and apply pressure so that I can get a nice stripe of the teal blue and the uh, string as a mask. Now that I've got several nice blue string prints down one strip section of the cards, I'm gonna move on to the next color. And the next color that I'm gonna use is going to be the metallic gold. I'm going to lay that out. I'm going to leave this blue here. This will tint the gold in interesting ways, so I'm not going to clean it. And I'm going to lay that gold out in a strip along the top edge of the plate. Put the string into the gold and run this strip down the opposite end of the card. I'm applying a lot of pressure with the palm of my hand because these craft paper cards are a little rigid and we need to make sure that we get a good impression down through the string. Beautiful. Now I'm going to lift the string and quickly pull a ghost print from the plate, the second print. Sometimes you don't get this to pull very quickly because here in Florida, it's very hot right now and the paint is drying really quickly, but let's see. So that one didn't pull quite as well, but there is still some nice gold kind of mixed in there. So we'll run this one with a print again and maybe use a little bit more paint. Another layer of gold working quickly because of the drying time. We'll put this strip along the top edge of this card. We'll pull that off, quickly remove the string, and see if we can grab that ghost print, that second print. Better this time. Got to work quickly, but I got that second print of gold. Beautiful with the brown showing through and overlapping some of the teal. Both the teal and the metallic gold are opaque fluid acrylic paints, which means they will block out what's underneath them. Whereas my second two colors are gonna be translucent. The quinacridone magenta and the anthraquinone blue are both translucent and they will layer and blend with what's down on the lower layer. So I'm gonna go through and do gold on the rest of my stack of teal cards and check back in with you for the next layer. Now I've got some beautiful cards with both teal and gold overlapping uh, in some cases and separate strips in some cases and totally overlapping. The results are kind of unpredictable. So you have to make practice, practice, practice. I really like this one and then that one. So our next layer is going to be 
the uh, quinacridone magenta. Again, I'm gonna spread a thin layer out on the plate that I have not cleaned. I'm gonna brayer it into a strip, lay the jute string into the paint, and take my prepared card and press on this end. I'm controlling where that color goes by the pressure that I'm applying, but it is still a haphazard kind of random effect. Look at that. As I lay the string in random patterns into the paint, I'm also going to take the card and just do it on one edge. You really need to be careful where you position the paint along the card and how the layers interact. And that's just a matter of experimenting and practice. That's beautiful. Now I'm gonna use this card and try to run it down the center on the remaining paint. So I'm gonna sort of line up that center and apply my pressure right through the middle with the heel of my hand. Nice. Now, working quickly, I'm gonna get the ghost print where I'm gonna take and print up without the string the paint pattern that is left behind. Again, using the palm heel of my hand to apply a lot of pressure to make sure I get the best possible print. And there's my ghost print. Went right over the gold, but you can still see the gold through it. Now I've got some lovely cards with the three colors, the last one being the quinacridone magenta with the string as a mask and then the secondary print after I remove the string and press the paint that was trapped under the string as the ghost print. We get varying amounts of paint from light paint to very heavy paint. So there's a lot of variables that happen in here and you just have to keep on printing and keep on practicing. The last layer that I'm gonna do next is the anthraquinone blue. That is the darkest color and that'll go on last on each of the cards. So by now you've got this process down. You're adding a little bit of paint. You're rolling it out in a strip. That was a little bit too much paint, a little overzealous with that. Rolling it out in a strip laying the string in a pattern and determining where on this card can I do a strip of the dark blue, perhaps along here at the very bottom, a thin strip. So I'm gonna press that, woo, and I've removed the string, put that back on there, and I've got a nice dark strip at the top. Working quickly, I can get a few more prints out of this because I got a lot of paint on there. So again, pressing with the palm of my hand and making a strip only of the darkest color so as not to cover all the previous layers. The string's getting a little sticky. Look at that. That's a beautiful dark blue. So I'm gonna go through and do, uh, I wanna show you a ghost print. So we've gotta remove a lot of paint before we can get to that ghost print stage. Ah, look at that, beautiful. Almost there. Let's put this one on the gold edge, over the gold edge. One more, got paint down the middle here. Beautiful. And now I'm gonna quickly remove the string and pull a ghost print right over the gold on this one. Look at that, nice. This one, I'll do it on the edge. I've got to move very quickly because the paint is drying here in the heat. But that's probably a good thing because it doesn't allow me to fuss over the decision that I'm making. Rather, I'm being more spontaneous as I move along quick pace without a lot of thought. Look at that, I like that strip. I'm gonna add more paint. Repeat the process over again. Again, I'm gonna determine where on this composition the darkest layer would look good. So small strips, that really came out nice. Moving the string around. I'm gonna try this one down the middle. So in the middle, I'll just add pressure down the middle. Try not to add pressure on the outer edges. I 
And there I have it right down the center. Moving the string around again. This one I have room on the edge here towards the bottom. And you can see that I worked the paint from light to dark. So the last layer is the darkest layer. Lovely. And I'm going to pull a ghost print now without the string, picking up the paint that was in a pattern trapped under the string. And there's the ghost print. You could probably get one more strip out of this right down the middle where this one is blank. I'm not wasting any paint or any time. Perfect. Now I've got a ghost print, and I think I might be able to pull that lower here, but I'm not sure if it's still wet enough. No, it's gotten dry already. So I'm going to go through and finish the rest of the cards in the same process with this dark blue. Now I've got a beautiful set a stack of hand-painted cards with beautiful colors simply from the string and the gel plate. I know that my friends and family love receiving these cards from me. I've started with brown craft this time. That's my favorite to work on, but you can also work on white or other colors of paper and cardstock. You can experiment with other colors of paint that sort of are harmonious with the color of your cardstock. And um, you're just going to go on and on from here and everyone's going to look forward to getting cards from you. So um, as a final note, uh, if you want to sell these cards, and that might be a great idea at your next art show, um, what you do is you take the card and the envelope, and you notice that we, painted, we printed both sides of the card, so you get to choose which side is the front. But you put it with the envelope. Uh, sometimes I like to put the envelope inside so people can see both sides of the card. I prefer to stack them like that. And then I have these clear plastic sleeves that I get on Amazon, and... This one is too small. Oh, anyway, this is for a four by six card. But the clear plastic sleeve, the card goes right inside of it and they are self-adhesive strip on the top where you pull the strip off and fold it over to seal it. And then you have your card and envelope in a nice plastic bag that you can set up shop for selling your cards online or in person. So thanks for being part of this tutorial. Uh, check my... Uh, my uh, mono printing class for collage paper that is online out at my website www.paperpaintings.com workshops